Let me see a show of hands. Does anyone currently go to the gym to exercise, lift weights, do cardio, whatever it might be? Awesome. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, does anyone do any exercise in their own home? Go outside for runs, go biking, whatever it might be. All right. Not bad. And my last question, is there any Sixers fans in the room? Awesome. The Sixers guys have absolutely nothing to do with my talk today. I'm just excited for what the future holds for them. So with that, let's, uh, let's get started. So we're going to talk about the future of exercise and what that is going to look like over the next five to ten years. All right. And to help explain what that's going to be, I want to share a great story about Chaz McCormick. Chaz is a professional baseball player for the Houston Astros. He's an outfielder for them. He actually grew up locally, went to Henderson High School. After Henderson, he attended Millerville University and set two great records there. One, the all-time hits record, and he set the all-time hits record for the, for the uh, PSAC, which is the division that, that uh, Millersville plays in. And the PSAC is a tremendous division. They produce multiple draft picks every year and a few big leaguers. All right. After Chaz was drafted by the Houston Astros in the later rounds of the draft, all right, he pretty much, you know, you have a short season. You, you play baseball for about three to four months, and then you come and train, all right? And your off seasons are about three to four, probably about three to four months long. And during the off season, what a professional baseball player does is they take care of their body, they work out, and they try to improve their on-field performance. So they improve their throwing mechanics, their bat speed, and just their overall baseball skill. All right. Something else that they do is they also have to get another job. And Chaz's job was a painter. So he would work as a painter, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., would come into the gym, cover in paint. Right? And then he would work out and train. And he did that for four to five years, which is the average length that a minor leaguer takes to get to the big leagues. All right. You're probably asking yourself, well, why does a minor league baseball player, who's the 1% of what they do, have to work as another job? They have to work as another job because they actually don't make a lot of money. The average minor league baseball player makes about eight to $10,000, which is below the poverty line. Right? Compared to other minor league sports, such as the NBA, you know, the G League, or the NFL practice squad players, it's not even close. A lot of players in the offseason find just random jobs to support their families, support themselves, pay for training. Right? Some people work for UPS, some people referee basketball games, short term, part time jobs just to make money to maybe one day get to the big leagues. When a player comes in to train, and kind of what I do on a day to day basis, guys, as a transition coach, Someone comes in, we sit down, you identify a baseline of injury history, identify some goals, you know, where they want to accomplish over the next three or four months. And then we test their range of motion, your flexibility, your mobility, take a look at your strength, your fitness qualities, your muscular endurance, your aerobic fitness, your speed, your power. Right? We test you in all these things to come up with a plan and a transition program to get to where you want to get to. But that's kind of what we do now, but that's not where we started, right? Fitness and exercise is a very growing field, and it's always adapting and always changing due to a lot of different things. Technology, you know, research and science is always changing the field. And, you know, we started off in the 1900s doing, I don't even know what that is, to the 1950s where Olympic weightlifting was super popular and still is today, with hang cleans and snatches and all these great exercises to the 1970s with Arnold Schwarzenegger, bodybuilding, Venice Beach, powerlifting, super, super popular time, right? Physique goals, awesome time. The 1980s, aerobic step classes, right? To the DVDs and the VHSs of the 1990s with P90X, right? Fitness is full of trends. Some stay and some go, right? So. That's kind of where we came from, and this is kind of where we are now, where, you know, CrossFit, the sport of CrossFit is super popular. You know, the in-home exercise is so, so popular right now with 
peloton and tonal and mirror and all these other different types of ways to exercise in your own home. All right? And a lot of strength conditioning coaches today are utilizing awesome technologies such as gym aware or push band, which are just ways to measure speed or the, you know, how fast the barbell is moving. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. And you know, where are we going to be in the next five to 10 years is, is really exciting. And if you, if you even go back to just 15, 20 years ago, the research and the science is always changing. Trying to identify a standard and a way to get people better at their sport or improve their health is so cool to say. So, you know, what the future is going to look like, guys, for fitness and exercise and strength and conditioning, I do believe that technology is going to be a crucial part of that. All right? I think in, in commercial gyms, you're going to start seeing pieces of equipment or iPads more involved in, you know, measuring your progress when you go to the gym. Instead of just moving a pin down and that you're lifting more weight each week, you're going to have a profile pulled up and it's going to say, hey, last week I moved this much weight at this, at, at this speed for this many reps in this range of motion, right? So we're just quantifying so much in exercise, which is so, so cool and so exciting to say. Another cool part that I think the future of exercise is going to hold, and kind of I think it's still stood the test of time, is just the personal connections that are built from a coach to, a, to an athlete, right? The, the, the um, rapport that is built when someone comes in and, and trusts in your ability and knowledge to improve in their exercise or improve in their fitness is so cool, and I love, I, I just love that as a coach. And, you know, I want to share this quick story. You know, it's one of my favorite things about, about being a strength conditioning coach is when you know you work with a minor leaguer for four to five years, you see him grind, work all these jobs, you know, lift a lot of weight, four to three hours a day they train to get a text message or a phone call one day and say, hey Rob, I made it to the big leagues, thanks for everything you do. Right? That's so powerful and I love that. So you know that that component of 